There are several reasons someone could require a craniotomy, but an awake craniotomy is not an everyday procedure. The reason you do an awake craniotomy is when there's a lesion that needs to be taken out of the brain. And it can be in an area of the brain that's very eloquent, that has a lot of function. So for example, speech, motor are two examples where we do awake craniotomies. Those kind of functions are really important to us. That's what makes us human and that's what allows us to enjoy what we do in life, right? And so for that reason, I want to do surgery awake so that way I take out as much tumor safely without causing any paralysis. We have technology and computer systems that acts like a GPS device. So it allows me to precisely locate where I need to go with precision and accuracy. The idea of exploration or kind of estimating where the tumor is doesn't really exist anymore. And so the anesthesiologist will put the patient to sleep. Uh, I'll get started, do, you know, do my positioning and exposure and all that stuff. And then once I'm ready, the anesthesiologist will take the tube out and wake the patient up. Let's be awake at 11.45. 45, yeah. All right. Everyone reacts a little differently when they're coming out of anesthesia. Some people are very happy and pleasant and they listen to instructions and some patients wake up and they're ready to f fight and they're moving their arms and legs. So, you know, I have to take that into account as well. Just because someone would benefit from an awake craniotomy, if someone has high anxiety or if they're going to have trouble listening to instructions, I can't necessarily do that safely. It takes a lot of coaching before surgery with the patient, make sure, hey, look, you're going to be underneath this surgical drape. You're going to have a bunch of faces looking at you. You have to remain calm. This is why we're here. So we have exposed the brain. Um, everything's ready to go for the surgery part of it. We have actually woken her up from anesthesia. She is communicating with us. Uh, and now what we're going to do is we're going to check her motor function during surgery including her speech and all the other brain functions to make sure that we can do the surgery safe. I have a team in the operating room uh, where we are communicating with the patient. I ask them questions about their childhood and checking their memory and so they are, they're fully awake uh, and they will remember that for the rest of their lives. Once they're awake and I start the surgery, we are testing all the functions that I'm worried about, whether it's speech or motor, and we're constantly testing that as I'm taking tumor out. So Dr. Ahmed is excising tissue and taking samples to send to pathology to see where the margins are. Dr. Jeffries will be looking at it under the microscope to see if it's healthy tissue or brain tissue that is tumor related. Our goal as neurosurgeons is to take out as much tumor safely without hurting the patient. And, and that's the goal. Uh, sometimes we can take the entire tumor out and there are no consequences. And sometimes we have to intentionally leave a portion of tumor behind because if we went after that and we hurt the brain tissue, they could have issues with speech or paralysis or numbness or vision or, you know, what, whatever part of the brain is involved at that point. All right, Dr. Jeffries. Okay, so posterior brain tumor. There is still tumor, but the majority of that is normal. Okay, good. Really, it's all about patient safety, right? Uh, we do brain surgery all the time, and we have all these tools that we use to ensure patient safety, but if it's in an area that is very delicate, and I'm worried about uh, paralysis or speech or all the issues that I've mentioned before, um, doing an awake craniotomy ensures patient safety. So although it may be a, an experience that a patient doesn't want to necessarily remember, it's really in the patient's best interest.